literally does my heart so good, man, to see music not just do good numbers, but to see music impact people's lives. Yeah. You know, like I said, one of the main things that stuck out to me with that song was that, you know, the king of the universe would want to build a home in my worship. Right. I need as many people to know that as possible. What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Living Out Loud, where we're living out loud for the one who died for us. Hey, my name is LJ, and if you're new here, please consider subscribing. We have weekly conversations on God, faith, and living like Christ. One of my favorite songs out right now is Build Your Home by Rashard Wright. And guess what? We have Rashard here, right here, right now, to talk with us. If you don't know who he is, uh, he's a man of many, many talents. Uh, he's, not only is he a recording artist, he's a worship pastor, he's a writer, he's a husband, and a father. His song, Build Your Home, has begun to minister to the hearts of so many people far and wide. Many gospel artists, include, including Timothy Reddick, Daryl Walls, Todd Galbert, and Miranda Curtis, have all covered this song. And today we have the pleasure to hear from Rashad on the story behind Build Your Home. Family, let's welcome Rashard Ray. What's up, man? Appreciate <laughs> oh, you, man. Thanks for having me on, man. This is truly an honor, man. Love what you're doing. I appreciate that, man. I love what you're doing. Like I said, Build Your Home is like one of my favorite songs. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> and I appreciate that, man. That means a lot. Yeah, of course. You know, what? what inspired you to write that song? So, man, the crazy thing is, uh, I, I try to take zero credit for it because mm. literally, and this was back in, a lot of people don't know, I actually wrote this song back in 2018. Yeah. And um, literally, I wrote it, <laughs> I woke up singing it. I never actually sat wow. down to write the song. So, you know that space, right? <laughs> like, uh -huh. right between fully waking up and <laughs> being knocked out sleep. Yeah, I got like stuck right there, and I and I kept singing the song in my sleep. Wow. And, uh, and when I finally, you know, completely woke up, I, I grabbed my phone and I tried to uh, I tried to hurry up and sing it in my mm -hmm. phone before I forgot it. I ended up forgetting the everybody's favorite part of it uh, the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So forgetting that part. And um, maybe uh, either that evening or the next evening, mm -hmm. uh, maybe the next evening, I was just, I just grabbed my guitar and started worshiping, not even mm -hmm. trying to reach for that part that I forgot. I was just worshiping in my own personal time. Mm -hmm. and, and right in the middle of me worshiping, it all just kind of came back. Wow. And I re grabbed my phone and recorded it that time before I forgot it. So <laughs> I literally try not to take any credit, man, for that song. That was a God-given song uh, from top to bottom. I didn't have to reach for that song at all. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to, uh, man, It was that was probably, probably the most effortless song I've ever written because God literally did all the, all the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. Yo. He did all the heavy lifting. Yo, that's amazing. That is amazing. Did you think that, you know, it would become as, you know, big and like as widespread as it has become? No. No, <laughs> it didn't even that didn't even enter my mind. Wow. It didn't even cross my mind that so you know, Daryl was the first one to record it. Mm -hmm. Um I sent it to him and Literally, it was just a stab in the dark. I was like, let me just let me just see if he digs it. Yeah, you know, or if any at, at the most, he'll give me feedback or give me advice on right. how I could fix it or make it better or whatever the case may be. Um, and so I just sent it to him, and he reached back out to me. He said, "Yo, I'm working on this uh, EP, and it's called Songs to the King. I believe is what it was called. Yeah, or maybe for the King. Mm -hmm. one, one of those. And um." <laughs> He said, uh, he said, man, I would love to have this song on there. And wow. he was like, yo, it's not something that I'm, you know, selling or it's literally something I'm just trying to sow 
into the hearts of people. So I got behind it immediately. Obviously, Darren Walls can sing any song of mine that he, <laughs> that he wants to. Um, <laughs> uh, so that was a no-brainer for me. And immediately when he when he said it, um, I just felt a piece about it in my heart mm-hmm. to say, bro, just, man, rock out. Rock out, man. And then from that point, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. From 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 that point when I first sent the song, God said to me, He said, um, this will never be the money song. Mm. This won't be the song that will give you an immediate uh financial shift. Mm. Said, but the song is gonna do for you way more wow. than money. Whew. He said, he said, he literally said these words. He said, I'm going to make your name great. Your name is going to hold weight. Yeah. You won't have to send anybody else anything. People will come to you. Come on. I was like, well, yeah. Okay. I'll move that. Um, But literally, man, that was, that was the heart behind it. So when God told me that, um, of course, as, as, you know, human nature, as time goes on, you kind of lose those things, uh, mm-hmm. or I won't say you lose it, but you kind of lose that excitement. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so he, he texted me, uh, Daryl texted me the song after he recorded it. Yeah. It was at that point that I knew I, was, I said, okay, yeah, this song is going to go. Yeah. I don't know how far it's going to go. Mm-hmm. But it's definitely, um, definitely gonna go. Yeah, and it's still, <laughs> it's still taking off, man. It, it's crazy. Like you said, it's been since 2018. That's when you first wrote the song, and um, I found it um, last year. I found the song last year. Um, I was listening to Shamma Moore and Timothy Reddick's. Um, they were doing um, this worship with um, this group, and Jared. yeah. An amazing guy, man. And I, kn- I remember Timothy Reddick just like started singing, You can build your home on my worship. I stay right here. I was like, Whoa, whoa, whoa. what's that? <laughs> what's that? I like that part of the- this montage that they're doing. Uh, so found the song, and who I've literally been in love with that song ever since. So, um, I do it, it really had ministered to me. Um, it was, I think at the time that I heard it, it's, it really like gave language to what I was trying to tell God in my own life, you know, because worship is very important to me. I'm like, God, you can build your home on my worship. So to, what exactly does that mean to you? Man, so many things, bro. I think, I think my, my connection with the song came for two 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 different reasons one of them being just man the awesome idea that the king of the universe the god who created everything yeah would call my worship home Whew. would call my praise home that yeah. that's, was just man that was mind-blowing for me um so to sing that man it, it, that song broke me down every single time mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's the reason why the end of it um, is, is the part that people really just kind of lose it for because it's not so much that, and I, and I always say, it's, I don't even think it's so much that it was so beautifully uh, written. Maybe some may feel that way, but I think it's the message. Yeah. The, the rawness in it. Like, I didn't try to find a deep way. Like, I didn't mm-hmm. say, well, let me break this down. How can I say this in a deeper way? Or how can... It's yeah. literally just that. God, build your home on my worship. Um, the second reason is um, during this pandemic, uh, I think a lot of it, I'll speak for me, and I know a lot of my worship leader friends, mm-hmm. and we struggled because although, you know, worship is personal, you do you can do it at home, mm-hmm. there's still that longing to want to corporately worship with friends. Absolutely. And Lock arms with other people yeah. and just worship God, and not being able to do that was was tough. Mm-hmm. And I'll never forget, man. Last year, God brought me back to build your home, and He said, He said, as long as I'm alive and on the throne, you have a reason to get excited about worship. Woo. So sing, so sing like there's nobody listening but me. Woo. 
around your house like there's nobody watching but me. Because that should be a, that should be enough. That should be enough to get you excited about worship. And so those two, those two, uh, those two things have really just that's been what's, what what kind of tugs my heart when it comes to comes to the song. Would you say that's your favorite lyric of the song? Nah. <laughs> So my friend, well, yeah, it probably is. Well, one of two. My 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 other favorite lyric would be, um, uh, "Jesus, you are my center. My hope, my treasure is found in you." Mm -hmm. That and and the reason why I say that lyric might be my my most favorite is because that's a that's a, a that's a a message that if we get it, it'll change our lives forever. Yeah. He says, you are my center, my hope, my treasure is found in you. If we get that, man, that'll change the way we look at life. It'll change the Absolutely. way we approach things that may seem like failure. It'll change the way we uh, view uh, different things. Watching the economy go through what it went through, mm -hmm. it changed my whole perspective, even on yeah. that, because I, I, <laughs> I was reminded through a song mm -hmm. that I wrote, Jesus, you're my center. My hope and my treasure is not found in politics. Woo! Uh, it's not found in, in, in watching what Corona is going to do. It's literally found in you. I don't care if I, I don't care if I lose my job. I don't care if I, I don't care what happens. My hope and my treasure is found, is found in you. So that's why that lyric more so, um, both of them. Honestly, I'm torn. <laughs> Oh man, that pastor was about to come out. <laughs> Ooh, about to get out of my seat. That was good. <laughs> wow. I mean, I mean, I, I I totally agree. I mean, I believe you know that's exactly what I was feeling. You know, when I first heard the song, and ah, it is it really is just. I think it's beautifully written. I really do. I just think it's like heartfelt. It's just so heartfelt. Hey. I hope that you're enjoying this conversation. I know that I am. Rashad is just so sincere, so authentic, and I hope you know that you're getting value from this. If you're new, I just want to remind you, please subscribe to the channel. Like I said before, we have weekly conversations on God, faith, and living like Christ, and I would love for you to join the Living Out Loud community. You can also follow me on Instagram at it's underscore L-J-A-Y-Y. -Y. And, you know, please message me. Please let me know that you're watching. I would love to connect with you guys. Also, support Rashad, you know, download his music, um, follow his page. And you can also follow um, and subscribe over here. But let's get back to the conversation. Out of all of the the people that have covered it, you know, like Miranda Curtis, and Timothy Reddy, Daryl Walls, like, who, Who's the one that you're like, I like this one. I really like this one. Man. Bro, honestly, I think because Daryl did it first, mm -hmm. that one's just going to always have that special place in my heart, man. And, and you know, for Daryl to even, because even, even though we didn't, at that time, we didn't really do any, like, uh, like I said, it wasn't something we were releasing to sell. Mm -hmm. um, but but still, the fact that he would say, yo, I'll sing your song. Yeah. There were people, there were people who wouldn't give me the time of day. Mm. Oakley, in the, in the industry, whatever, mm -hmm. wouldn't give me the time of day. But Daryl said, yo, bro, I, I got you. I think I had maybe one or two placements before that. Mm -hmm. But if you know anything about the music business, they don't even want to hear it if you don't have mm. something that charted with a major artist before. Yeah. So for Daryl to say, yo, bro, I'll sing it, it's always going to have a special place in my heart. Not to mention, he completely killed the... <laughs> I mean, he completely <laughs> killed it. Um, after him, uh, I would say... I would say Tim Bush, man. Mm -hmm. Tim Bush. And Bush and I'm not even talking about from a from a talent level um because both of those guys are equal to me and as far as talent anointing everything um you know you just kind of have a bias for the one that came out first yeah and on uh when Miranda them did it at uh, uh City. oh yeah. my god man 
I was in my room jumping. <laughs> Bro, first of all, I didn't even know when, because I knew they were going to sing it. Mm-hmm. Um, she told me they were going to sing it. I didn't know, first of all, I didn't know Tim Reddick was going to be there. That was a little surprise. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yo, they they killed it too, bro. I can't really say I have a favorite, bro. I like all of them. Because then I like when Tim adds the batteries one day in your court. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, 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 oh, man, Tim Reddick, that's my boy too. That's my <laughs> bro, man. He He's super anointed. Love that guy, man. Yeah, man, just all these just amazing people like singing your song, man. I know that feel just amazing. You probably still can't even believe it. <laughs> Bro, it's, it's nuts, man, but all glory to God. Yeah. Like I said, I, I, when it's, man, when you look around, man, and just see what God said just kind of started mm. come to life, bro, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. I, I've met some amazing people, bro. First of all, the crazy thing is, so the crazy thing is throughout this journey uh, with this song, so, you know, Todd Galbert sung it. Yeah. Well, that was, I. what happened was I sent it to, um, I sent Daryl's version to Tasha Cobbs. Mm-hmm. And, um, she like she loved it and uh was like yo i think ty would really love to sing this song yeah i was like well yeah send it to him <laughs> uh so he actually he so he actually recorded it um i think he's supposed to be releasing it sometime I, i'm not sure whenever he does he does but um saying that to say this so i went to his live recording mm-hmm. and man it's so awesome when god's word just kind of Start when you just start to see it come to pass. I went to his recording, and I'm telling you, it's it's star studded in there as far as gospel music. Chandler's there, wow. Tim Reddick is there. Well, I already knew Tim Reddick. <laughs> Tim Reddick was there. Uh, uh, Isaiah Templeton, wow. uh, Tasha Cobb. I mean, all these people are there, and not one person said they didn't know me. Every wow. single person in there was like, "Yeah, yeah, I know you," with the exception of. Um, John Gray, but he knew the song. He, I just mm-hmm. had never met him before. He didn't know who I was. But I'm not even saying that from a brag, a docious place. Yeah. I'm literally saying it to say, bro, God's word mm. literally came to pass to where my name is mentioned in rooms that I've never been in, bro. Boy. People that I would dream to meet. Yeah. Know who I am. And, and again, it's not from a place of like, yo, I just want to be famous is literally god saying yo i said i was gonna make your name strong i said your music Uh is gonna minister to the masses and i'm gonna set it up for that i'm gonna set it up Mm -hmm. for that to happen Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yo god will always back up his word sir oh my gosh so dude you know um i'm a worship leader and you know um you sing it a second ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a little something. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, do you have any advice for, you know, people who are worship leaders right now or, you know, people who are looking to start uh, songwriting? Yeah, man. Uh, I would say just go for it. You know, from a worship standpoint, my advice would be to just never lose the main thing, like to keep the main thing the main thing. It's never about being a celebrity. It's never about yeah. being a superstar. Um, I think one of the reasons God even put me in the position to, to because I have, listen, I haven't even scratched the surface. I have so much to do yeah. um, and I'm excited about it. But I believe the reason why God can cause elevation in my life is because I kept the main thing, the main thing. I ain't trying to be a celebrity. I ain't trying to, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, yeah. I just want, listen, I just want people's I want to introduce people to this amazing God that I've gotten to know. Um, and I want to inspire people to worship him. So as a worship leader, don't ever lose the main thing. Don't ever get caught up in because it's easy to start watching all these guys, man, who mm-hmm. who we, you know, we low-key aspire to be one day. We want to be in those positions. We want to have, 
you know, even people we look at and learn from and all yeah. that stuff. Um, but as we as we pursue worship, understand what makes Chandler Chandler isn't because he's a superstar. Right. Chandler Moore is who he is because of his relationship with God. That's it. God said, and because of his relationship with God, God said, I want to put that on display. Yeah. And by God putting that on display, it inspires people like you. It inspires people like mm -hmm. me to also want to build a life inspiring other people yeah. to worship God. So keep the main thing the main thing. As far as songwriting, bro, honestly, man, just write. Write, 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 write. Um, in terms of, from an industry standpoint, um, one thing I've learned, man, is you never know who's watching. Mm. You never know who's listening. In this day and age, uh, with social media, it's so easy to be heard. Yeah, you can accidentally just be <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, be seen by by somebody who can literally make a life changing decision for you. Yeah. Um, so just write. And if you merge writing with keeping the main thing the main thing, mm. when you share, that authenticity is just going to bleed through your videos. Okay. It's going to bleed. Because what happens is when your goal is to minister to people, when you write songs, man, you're not going to post them just because, man, I want to show off this song. Yeah. I wrote. You're posting it because, man, yo, this this ministered to me today. Mm. I want to I wanna, I wanna help it minister to y'all. I want to minister to y'all. And... Um, you never know who will come across that, man. So I would just say write and share, man. Write and share. And don't be afraid to write with other people. That's something I had to I had to let go of. <laughs> <laughs> man, I that's something I'm I'm literally still growing in that yeah. area. But don't be afraid to write with other people, man, because other people will inspire new thoughts and new ways mm -hmm. you probably wouldn't have even thought of, of approaching the music. Yeah, that is so good. Um, do you have anything new coming out on the way? Yeah, man. So, um, so we have uh, what do we have? Number one, we have the Build Your Home merch that yeah. is available. You go on uh, www dot uh, rednationoutlet dot mm -hmm. You'll be able to see all. You see the. Uh, you'll be able to order your Build Your Home merch. Um, so a lot of people don't know I lead a ministry called Red Nation Worship. Um, and that ministry is just based around, it's centered on grace and just spreading the love of God because we believe the love of God is transformative. So yeah. um, we believe in the power of grace. We believe in the power of the blood. And we, we spread it, man, through Ooh. music, songwriting. If you ever, listen, as a songwriter, you want to connect, man. If you haven't followed, I believe you, I'm not sure if you did. If yeah, you haven't yeah. followed Red Nation Worship, go follow us, man. We're going to start having some songwriting uh, sessions on, on Zoom very soon, man. And, and uh, okay. yeah, man, I'm excited about it. We also have an event coming up October 30th. Um, and nobody knows it, so I'm breaking it here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, right? <laughs> October 30th, man, we have our annual event. We do it every year. It's called Drench Night. The, the last one we did, we brought um, Osby Berry and um, uh, Jaleesa Faye. I don't know if you know her. She's from from my city. Uh, uh, but it was bananas, yo. Uh, I, like, I'm going to start posting the footage from that night, man. But it was crazy. So be looking out for that. We're going to start promoting it very soon. Yes, sir. I most definitely will. I need to copy some merch as well. <laughs> I'm going to do that as soon as possible. But, dude, uh, that's all that I have for you today. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to say to the people? No, man. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, man, for uh, just supporting the song. You know, I'm just a, a regular guy from <laughs> Miami, Florida, that's just trying to tell people about Jesus. And it literally does my heart so good man to see music not just do good numbers but to see music impact people's lives yeah like, you know like i said one of the main things that stuck out to me with that song was that you know the king of the universe would want to build a home in my worship right i need as many people to know that as possible Whew. and being able to see it just kind of spread 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 man that has been that has been mind-blowing for me man so thank you guys so much if you haven't streamed the song already please stream it check it out download it wherever you listen to music 
uh, you can grab it. If it ministered to you any, in any way, uh, feel free to DM me, reach out to me, man. I love to hear how this song has impacted your life. Perfect, perfect, man. And um, before we close, could you end us with a closing prayer on today? Lord, man. Ah, God, we thank you. We honor you. We worship you, God, because of who you are. You're, you're so loving. You're so faithful. You're so mighty. God, you're literally the perfect father. You're the perfect father, God. And we don't take your love for granted. We don't take your presence for granted. What a privilege and an honor it is to be able to spend time with you, God. To be able to spend time with you. You're literally standing out in the open with your arms wide open, just ready for your invitation. Just waiting for your invitation, God. So this is your invitation into our hearts. This is your invitation into our lives. God, I thank you, God, that something was said on this live to inspire someone, to pierce someone's heart and point them back to you, God. We don't do this for any self-glory, God, but we do this because we want to see people's lives changed by the power of your love, God. And we thank you that what you, what you wanted to say today, God, was said. The point that you wanted to get across came across, God, through this, through this video. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Man, Rashard, thank you again so much, dude. Thank you, man. And I really appreciate it. I'll talk, I'll talk to you soon, man. Yes, sir. See ya.